happening today? It's Alejandro Melgar here over at Urban Athlete Fitness Studio here in Calgary, Alberta. And I want to talk to you guys today about the hip extension or the back extension. That machine that's used for those exercises actually revolves around the movement pattern, which is the hinge. Before we can get into that exercise, we want to make sure that we're hinging properly. So I have this dowel over here that I want to use to showcase the movement itself. A couple things before we get to it is that we want to note that we're trying to lengthen the hamstrings. So we want to feel the stretch there. We want to activate our glutes. So we have to really think about squeezing them when we prop ourselves up into extension. So one simple way to figure out uh, like how we want to go about it, like I said, using a dowel. And what you want to do is you want to place it along your spine, here, like so. So you want the back of the head, middle of your back, and then right down here, right by the tailbone, you want to make sure all of this is flat. Even this opening right here, try to flatten yourself up against it. And then from there, you want to push with your feet, or grip with your feet, I should say. Bend the knees slightly, just a little bit, right? And then you're going to move forward and move at the hip. And the point that you want to stop at is going to be where you feel the stretch the most. And then as you prop yourself up into extension, you want to squeeze your glutes. That movement pattern there, that is like essentially what you're going to be doing when you're doing a hip extension. Key things that I found that helps with this is that you're also training your pelvis or your hips. We want to make sure this is stable. We don't want to be in this like tilted forward position or tilted back. In other words, anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic tilt. Finding neutral is going to be very key to making sure we move properly at the hip versus using our lumbar spine in any way. That's actually why I like using this because you have to keep yourself flat up against the post when you're trying to hinge. That's essentially how you want to get started with it before you even jump on the movement itself. All right, so I'll meet you there. This is our angled hip extension machine here, and you can actually adjust the angles on this guy. You can go from 55 degrees down to 35 degrees. 55 degrees would be a bit easier, and when I say easier, just, a lot, just you're kind of closer to standing so you can get that clearance, you can get that hip hinge that you want to practice. And 35 degrees would be if you want more of a challenge, more tension or length of the hamstrings and glutes. Uh, so the knob there, that red one you see in the middle, you can pull on that and lift up the pad in here. You want the top of the pad there to match up with your hip so as you can get that clearance when you're actually hinging over the padding. Once you, once you find that, your feet, you're going to find those footholds just behind you there and you're going to put them into place, make sure the Achilles goes right up against the padding. Your knee is going to go underneath the pads that you adjusted initially to get that height and it, it, whether it goes under it or not, I'd say try to think of keeping your leg right up against it. Then once you find that, get that posture pelvic tilt in place, I want that rib cage in, then we're going to hinge at the hip, make sure our back is nice and flat, abs are still fired up, we want that length through the hamstrings, you're going to go as far as your hamstrings will let you. And then we're going to pop ourselves up into hip extension. We want to think of our glutes doing all the work here, right? So my core is still working hard, right, to make sure my back stays nice and straight, right? But as I hinge, I want that length of the hamstrings, and I want to squeeze my glutes, thrusting my hips into the padding. And notice that I'm not getting that high, right? It's not about height. Height isn't everything. I mean, in some cases, yeah, sure, height is, height, height is good, right? But in recruitment... Height isn't everything, right? And Haley's gonna show us another version that actually you'll see that height isn't everything. And so she still has her legs set up in the same manner you'd be doing your hip extension, right? But she her torso is more concave. Her torso is more like tucked in. Rib cage is in. She has more of a focus on crunching her abdominals. She's really trying to get that posture pelvic tilt. As you can see, you can see how her hip is moving. It's just tilting back and she's putting more stock in squeezing her glutes. So for some people, this actually might be way better for you to do to get those glutes fired up if you're not really noticing them. So it's a good like glute pump. And so here, we just got our traditional back extension or just a back extension, the difference essentially between a hip extension and a back extension. It doesn't look like much, does it? It doesn't look like there's a big difference. But the main thing is that we have intent here. We're trying to kind of basically not use too much of the lower body and place all of it or most of it anyhow into our spinalis muscles there. So there you have it. Three different variants you can use. I'd say treat it more as a hip extension versus a back extension, but if you choose a back extension, it is still basically about intent.